When it comes to being incarcerated, you don't ever want to underestimate someone. I don't care if they're big, fat, tall, short, chubby, stocky, bulky, scrawny, none of that. Okay? If you're watching this, you already know why you're here. What's up, everybody? K Frog TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. I want to tell everybody welcome back to another episode of the Inmate Dictionary. Today we're going to be speaking on letter D. Don't underestimate no one. All right? That's common sense. As y'all seen in the intro, I don't give a damn what size someone is. They could be the smallest person you've seen in the world as far as being the biggest person you've done seen. You never want to underestimate no one. Okay, I done seen some people that were small, scrawny, didn't look like they'd bust a grape in Welcher's backyard that would literally do something tragic to you. And I've also seen some that are as big as a damn door that ain't shit but a cupcake, snowflake, all right? You never want to underestimate no one. Here you're inside a prison. People are all in there for breaking the law. Some kind of way they are in there for committing a crime. Whether they're innocent or not, they were around it, they partaked in it, somehow, some way, they were accused of it. No matter what it is, some type of law was broken in order for you to be inside of prison, okay? And I've seen a lot of people get themselves in messed up situations because they underestimated someone, okay? Now, you might see someone that comes into the dorm, they're fresh, they're brand new, walking in, they got they, they're carrying $100 worth of canteen, they're dragging their mattress next to them, and you can just tell by the way they look that they're a new cop. They're fresh meat, they're new, they just got there. That doesn't mean that that person right there isn't capable of doing some shit that's probably not even crossing your mind because you're judging them by what they look like. If someone gets in an argument with you, Okay, you don't know how serious that argument is. You don't know if that person is in their dorm right now dwelling on that shit and can't wait for them to clear count so they can pop these doors and let everyone out just so they could come back to where you are and wet you up. You don't know if that person's thinking what you're going to do to them. Okay, because like I said, prison is a dangerous place. So anytime conflict happens, a lot of people will think the other person's trying to get them first, so they'll go and get them. And then a lot of times the person who they had problems with wasn't even thinking that shit. Wasn't even, you know, to them it wasn't even that serious. But they got got by someone who thought they were going to try to get them first. All right? You never want to underestimate anybody. You know the saying, never judge a book by the cover, right? Right? For any of y'all that done read any Robert Greene books... You know, 33 Strategies of War, Art of Seduction, 48 Laws of Power, anything like that. Them books, covers don't look all that, right? They all look the same, they're just a different color. But, if you've read them books, then you know them books are powerful. Them are good books, alright? How many of y'all done read a book before and the cover looked like shit? And, but then when, and, and it didn't even look interesting. But then next thing you know, you start reading, you're like, damn, that's a good ass book. I've been asleep this long. I never even knew this book was actually raw. I know from my actual experience, I was in confinement in the county jail and had a stack of five books sitting in there for my first 20 something days. I didn't want nothing to do with any of them books because the front cover did not look interesting. Two of them didn't even have a cover on. I read the first line, I was like, oh, this shit's trash. Next thing you know, what? About 20 something days go by, I'm like, bitch, I'm back here stressing. I ain't got nothing but time to do. There's this old dusty ass pile of books sitting right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get into one just to kill some time. And them bitches were raw. See what I'm saying? Never judge a book by the cover. Just like you never wanna underestimate someone. You never know what someone is going through or what someone has planned to do if they find themselves in a conflict, okay? That's why when people first come into prison and people want to extort them and put down on them, 
The people who usually do the extorting and the putting down are people that have people behind them. Okay? So the person who comes in, you know, going to their 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 bed and they got their bag of canteen and shit, they're going to put it in there. Someone will come up there and try to put down on them and try to extort them from some money and shit. Really, that person who's doing that has a couple other people who aren't on scene at the time that are watching from a distance. But they do that because they pick on the weak. They look for people who look vulnerable, people that will actually make, you know, make them feel successful by giving them what they wanted. So they feel like they succeeded, they put down on, they got what they wanted, okay? But I've seen some people, especially some white boys, come in that truly look pie as hell. Like I wouldn't even hang out with them because of how pie they looked, you feel me? But people tried to take their shit and them boys caught the wall, bro. Them boys caught the wall and fought four back to back one time. You know what I'm saying? Like straight up, like you got me fucked up. You're going to have to beat my ass all day. Whether they, whether they know how to fight or whether they could just take pain and they could take an ass whooping. You feel me? You got people in there who are trying to rob and put down on people that, you know, they'll, they'll fight the person just to show them, look, I ain't playing with you. You give me your shit like I said. But when that person you're fighting still ain't giving it up and you don't have to go four or five rounds with them, that person who that jack boy was is going to be like, man... Fuck this shit, dog. I ain't had that shit, bro. I've been here fighting all for the last hour and a half, bro. Fuck this shit, bro. And that's gonna make the Jack boy give in and just say the hell with it, bro. Oh, we respect you, bro. We respect you. You know what I'm saying? If you look at the people that be on the news these days, you know, that do tragic stuff, you know, in schools and, and just different, like, shit that is, like, mind-blowing that land inside a prison, look at them. Just look at them. They don't look like they would do it. You feel me? A lot of people must have underestimated them, you know? And even when they're incarcerated and locked up, a lot of people are going to underestimate that person. You feel me? They're going to be like, oh, he ain't living. And then when they go to looking at his charges, they're going to be like, oh, all right, well, yeah, he only did all that because he had a gun. Ain't no gun in here now. Now what's he going to do? And try to put down on him and think, oh, you ain't got no gun now, so now what? Da, 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 da. And that person's going to go back. If he done took... Inside of a school, he done took about 15, 20 people out. You think he ain't finna go back to his cell and try to find out a way to come take something from you? To come take your life just for playing with him? Because you underestimated him. And the way it works in prison is, is a, it's a, you better get or be got. Like I said, you could be walking through the child hall with your tray and boom, you and someone end up shrugging shoulders to each other. Boom. And then you're like, hey man, what the fuck, bro? You know what I'm saying? And he'd be like, what, what, what's up, bro, man? What you saying, bro? And you clutch like you finna pull the bang around. Other dude walk away like it ain't nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. You feel me? And keep it going. Don't think nothing of that. Go sit down, eat your tray and shit. Two seconds later, that dude get up. You watch him for a couple minutes. He don't even budge. He looks like he's not even stunting you. He's hanging out with his friends and shit, eating his child, just vibing. And then you, you, you look a couple minutes as you're eating, and then you forget all about it because it wasn't that big of a situation. And you feel like you got off on top because you act like you were going to clutch your banger and pull it out on the side of the child hall. And all reality, when he goes to dump his tray, you see him walk over there to dump his tray, dump his tray. You're not thinking of, no, you go to eat. He acts like he's walking out. He doubles back, comes back, rips your mouth up on the razor blade. All because you just underestimated him. You didn't think nothing of it. Okay? And like I said, I've seen it happen plenty of times. People who they thought wouldn't be the ones that will crash out are the ones that crash out. You got ones that are truly not you know living like that that aren't goons that don't want to harm no one that just want to do their time but if you put them in a corner and you block them off and they life is threatened they will physically hurt you okay and that's the same as when it comes to people pulling in check-in stunts there could be someone that is outnumbered okay he could know there's eight of them in the dorm and only one of him you feel me they've been making them pay rent and break it off they've been trying and putting down on them and, and since they've been so familiar with doing it to them, they feel like they're going to always get away with it. And then in all reality, they don't even know that this dude plans on waking up today and crashing out on one of them in front of the officers, which is a check-in stunt. You get what I'm saying? But he's by himself, so he's got to do what he's got to do. You feel me? And then next thing you know, y'all are walking across the compound. You Y'all got your eyes on everybody except for that one person. That one person that you know has been paying rent 
that's been breaking it off, that's done been beat up, smacked in the mouth. They done made them do laundry. They done made them wash their bowls and fucking plates and everything. Made them do their dishes, make their beds, all that. That one person that you are not paying attention to ends up walking by right near the officers and just decides to jump on someone, any, any random one out of all of them. He knows they're all a clique and just decides to grab him by the back of the shirt right here, yank him and just start wetting him. Now the officers see it, oh shit, and they jump in, they, they, they hold everything down, but guess what happens? Out of that squad of people, one of their homeboys is going to the infirmary, so they lost a soldier, all because they underestimated that person that they were putting down on for the last couple months. That's why I say, you don't ever want to underestimate nobody. Straight up. I done seen some people in school and the detention center when I was younger that didn't look like they would harm a fly. That, would, that, did, that didn't look like they was living like that at all, you know? And you may see things happen to someone or you see different situations and that person, you know, not fight when they need to. So then that'll make you think, oh yeah, he ain't living like that, bro. He, 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 he bought the call out from what's his name, bro. He, you know, he, he this and he's that. In all reality, all he did was he gritted his teeth and he bit, and he bit down and he held it all in. You feel me? So now you're underestimating him because of what you've seen. You feel me? Then you go to get in a conflict and you're, you're thinking that you're the, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be the top dog off rip because you're judging him off of something that you've seen take place. And in all reality, that dude going to fuck you up. That's what happens. Like I said, in the detention center, there was jits in there that literally, literally, Look like they got the wrong person in there right now. Like this, there's no way this is the jit that did that. There's no way. Let's people pick on him, try and bully him, talk all this shit. And then all of a sudden when he don't get a viso or something like that, or they buck us on wreck, turns up and cranks, starts calling out every single person who tried him. You, nigga, you tighten me up. You tighten me up, bitch. Ass. Swinging on him, right? like meaning that business. Now all them same people who were picking on him are all... Don't know what to do. Froze up. You feel me? And all it was is that person wasn't pie. That person just knew how to take more and accept more. You feel me? Little things didn't matter that much to him. He knew how to like, you know, put his pride to the side and just, you know, try to dodge conflict rather than actually get physical with it. And that's the same thing in prison. You will see some people in there that look like they will not hurt no one. And they will literally take you up through there. So like I said, don't ever underestimate anyone. Y'all know how that is. That isn't just for prison. But this is a strategy that will help you survive while you are incarcerated. It's common sense. Okay? Never, ever underestimate someone. Alright? Anyways, man. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video on up. I appreciate y'all tuning in to another episode of this series. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button on your way out if you ain't hit it on your way in. And I'll see y'all next time, man. This frog.